All right. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is a coach's workshop, obviously, for the mystery architecture portion of Science Olympiad. I'm going to be the event supervisor. My name is Kelsey Kneebone. Uh, disregard the fact that my little bubble says Tyler. Um, we'll be walking through some pieces of the website, rules, and then a couple of like generic examples so that uh, you guys can have all the equipment you need. So. If you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat or feel free to interrupt me as I'm talking. Thank you. Oh, maybe if we could just go one slide at a time. All right, so the first thing to talk about is the fact that all of these rules are located um, on for this event are located on the Science Olympiad website. This is a super great tool for um, not only just this event, but if you're looking for schedules, if you're looking for information about the buildings that we're going to, et cetera, uh, definitely check it out. So this is the mystery architecture section. Um, so in here we have a presentation that's very, very similar to the one you're about to see today. Uh, a couple different learning guides and worksheets uh, if you would like to um, share those with your team and then also past event coats uh, training. So uh, this will also be uploaded here as well for 2024. So you can come back to reference this document here. In this section uh, at the bottom, you would see the FAQs as well listed. So if you have any additional questions that we don't answer today or things that come up during your practices, definitely go in here and add them. They usually get responded to uh, and re-uploaded uh, with a new answer in about a week. So if you have any clarification you need, use that um, location. And then we're going to talk about the rules. Maybe. I'm sorry, we're having a technical difficulty morning. All right. So mystery architecture. These rules are also linked on the website. Let's talk about the goal. The idea is this. I don't know how we're going to start very basic, just to make sure everyone's on the same pages. Students will be given a mystery set of materials to build this freestanding tower. So freestanding meaning that it's not connected to the floor or anything in its surrounding. Uh, mystery set of materials, meaning that they will not have information about what those materials are until they walk into the room. So that is across the board for every team. The goal is that this tower holds a tennis ball on the top. So that's the, the very basics, right? Um, the way this works, one to two students, it's about 30 minutes, uh, and these are scheduled over the course of the day. Um, they're not how you would see a lot of other events is just one block. Everybody shows up. Uh, your team will have an assigned slot uh, that staggers 30 minutes throughout the, the day. Each uh, team will be given building materials. They will all be exactly the same. Anything they're given, they are able to use. So the bag that it comes in is free. Uh, it's materials to use. If there's... Um, and just literally everything there is there for them to use. If they, um, things that they can bring in with them, uh, they can bring in scissors, they can bring a ruler. Um, I'm not going to give them anything that they'd need any like power tools or anything to, to go and use, right? No knives or anything like that either. So uh, they'll get 20 minutes to construct this tower. Uh, the each team is given a stopwatch so that they can see their time uh, in minutes that have elapsed. That way we can give that to each team as they come in and start at their own specific time. If you would like to check the official tennis balls, this is the information there. You can find that on the website as well. When they're finished with their tower, they can come find the, the one of the, the adults in the room, right? Uh, we will then go measure the tower where they built it so they don't need to move it. We're going to look at the overall height uh, and how wide it is uh, before we put a tennis ball on it, right? That way, if there is any sort of failure, uh, we don't ha have to try and reconstruct it. 
um, the measurements in terms of brackets, the towers that hold will be on like an upper bracket, the towers, towers that fail will be on a lower bracket, um, and then they're by height. So uh, as I've said before, tower must be freestanding. It can't be attached to anything, not the floor, the wall, other surfaces, et cetera. So when we have finished measuring, the students would then put the tennis ball on the tower. Uh, they're given 10, a loose 10 seconds uh, to put the ball and stabilize that. Uh, they have to, the tower has to remain standing long enough to complete the measurement of the height. So I know this is a little um, ambiguous, but uh, if there's at any point where we felt like something was too long or like if I if I was taking too long to measure it because I would be the one um, there's there is a maybe a bit of subjectivity there but overall the tower needs to stay um, up while we're trying to get the the correct measurement on it uh, you as coaches will not be allowed in the room while the students are doing this uh, this is just the students ability to think on their feet and show their their skills we kind of, I started to talk about scoring, but I reined myself in to talk about scoring. The height of the tower is going to be what determines winners, right? And what determines the order um, of people, of the towers is getting ranked. Uh, no building material is to go over the height of the tennis ball. So you couldn't put the tennis ball an inch above the ground inside your tower and have your tower be multiple feet high. Um, the top of the tennis ball is considered the highest point. Towers that support tennis balls will be ranked above those that do not. Uh, so tallest tower that holds a tennis ball down to the shortest tower that holds a tennis ball, and then tallest tower that fails to hold a tennis ball down to shortest tower that fails to hold a tennis ball. In the event of a tie, which I have not yet to see, the winner of a tie will be the tower with the smallest base. Okay. Uh, we're going to get into maybe let me can get down here. We discussed this a little bit, but just to re-emphasize, your students are allowed to bring in a ruler and scissors, uh, pliers. They're not allowed to bring in anything that could hurt themselves or others in the room. Um, we'll be reviewing what they're bringing in as they come in to the space just to make sure that everyone is uh, on the same page. I highly encourage you to make sure they have a pair of scissors. I do have a couple extra pair, but it it does go much better when they have their own. This is a picture of our measuring device. I know it's not super clear, but basically we have a long, uh, we have this tower that comes off of the floor we have a laser level um, that comes out so we can line up that bottom of the laser light to their tower and then we can measure the distance off the floor that that um, the bottom of this piece is. So it allows us to measure it a lot more precisely without having to touch their towers because that uh, we, we would hate to see something happen there and have any sort of failure from that. This comes back to the discussion about the tennis ball, right? A tennis ball supported an inch off the ground is considered the highest point. So in this scenario, whatever they're de determining where they're going to put the tennis ball, it needs to be on the top of the tower. I would never, I, I try very hard not to give any equipment that would intentionally make them fail this rule, right? Like I try to give cups that have a smaller diameter than the tennis ball. So the tennis ball doesn't fall all the way down into the base of the cup when they put it on the top, uh, things like that. But this is a rule that you want to make sure that they're aware of because it's really easy to design something like this, right? Where the tennis ball kind of, we've made a little cup on the inside and it's holding up our tennis ball there. So really emphasize to your team, the tennis ball needs to be on the top. Um, it needs to be the highest point on the tower. Anytime it falls inside or is not at the highest point, um, that would be considered a, uh, I'm blanking on the word, uh, that's just going to reduce the height of your tower, right? So keep that in mind when you're coaching your kids. 
examples of inventory items, examples of things that they could be given during the event. Uh, they'll probably see at least one or two of these, um, maybe more depending on the year. These are all items that you can purchase in the Science Olympiad kit. So this mystery architecture kit is built around the idea that you can make 10 individual practice sessions out of it. So um, let me zoom in up here. In the kit, these are the same exact materials, but they have quantities listed out next to them, right? Um, I'm most likely, there's a, I have not seen a world yet in my head where I would give them 40 pipe cleaners for one tower, right? They might get four pipe cleaners for a tower. So this kit has a lot of different things that they may see. Um, so they're good things to practice with. It's pretty inexpensive in terms of getting this all collected all at once. So I, I highly recommend using it um, and making it for 10 sessions, like 10 individual practices. Uh, if you give them this all at once, they have too much power and they don't have to think very hard. You can you can pretty easily build a tower out of that. OK. So I'm going to move out of the rules and into some examples. Uh, I want to take a brief pause just in case any questions have come up in the chat. Um, I don't see any. Does anyone have anything verbal that they would like to ask before we move into these examples? Uh, about the tools we can bring. Uh, yep. Can they bring a, a label check device? Horizontal label, like a bubble, water bubble. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that. Okay, thank you. No problem. I have a quick question. Um, will they get the tennis ball at the beginning of the event when they start building, or do they get it just at the end when they're ready to pop it on the top? We do give them a tennis ball when they come in the room okay, so they thanks. can practice setting it up there. <clears throat> can they each bring in scissors? Yes. Or are they limited to one so they could each, each have a pair of scissors, each have a, a set of pliers, you know, to, to use if there's two children? Correct. Yes. OK, that thank would you. be acceptable. Maybe I missed this. Is there a certain amount of materials like will you give them five materials to work with or, you know, 10 or is it just we don't know? It varies. It's not anything that I can officially say that they'll get a certain number of things. Uh, I would say for me, typically I give between five and 10 items uh, that then have various quantities of each of those items. Okay, thank you. So as they're setting up um, these items, um, as they're practicing, they can put the tennis ball on top and let's say it, it fails and falls down, they can kind of reconstruct it as many times as they need? Absolutely. Okay. All right, we'll move into some of these examples. So these are some examples I did both uh, the good and the bad, if you will. So examples, this is uh, obviously just two materials, straws and tape. Um, an example here, this is acceptable as it is not connected to the table, it's not connected to a wall, the tennis ball is at the highest point. Similarly over here, very different design, obviously, uh, but still acceptable as the tennis ball is the highest point. This we would consider unacceptable because it's being taped down to the table, right? So the structure is not um, individually supported. It's being supported by the floor or table. Uh, your students will be building most likely on the floor, giving them you know height and space for them to work. That way we don't have people climbing on chairs or anything to try and make their towers taller. Uh, Similar kind of examples, even, you know, just one piece of tape, still not acceptable. Uh, similarly here, this one, they also tape the tennis ball in. That's not going to fly. We don't, uh, they'll have to place the tennis ball when we go to measure the tower. And then this one again, acceptable, not connected to anything. Tennis ball is on top. A few more unique designs. Um, this one they've included, you know, popsicle sticks and string in the, the options of materials. This is where I was saying it can be very 
uh, appealing to try and put the tennis ball in the middle, right? You're centering your gravity and you're you're making it um, probably more realistic to how we would build something uh, in the real world, but uh, for, for sake of the rules and not just having a single straw that reaches seven feet in the air, uh, we don't allow the tennis ball to be hanging in the middle. So this would not be an acceptable option. Uh, this one, tennis ball is on top. It's not connected to the floor. That's great. This one, again, same thing, different design, which is kind of fun. Uh, I do like this as well because it shows I'm not going to go buy, you know, 100 baby bottles for this to work, but uh, you can end up with a lot of different materials in there. So it's nice to practice with some of those different pieces, uh, like there's forks and spoons in the practice kit, things like that. Um, this is, I will say, a decent example as well of a cup, if you will, that doesn't immediately fail uh, with the tennis ball, right? So this is maybe Dixie, uh, Dixie cup size, little mouthwash cup. Uh, so the tennis ball isn't falling into it. Whereas if you had, say, a red solo cup and you put a tennis ball in it, right, then immediately your tower is not the tallest point for that tennis ball. All right. And then we're going to move into some just other materials. These are more pictures that were from online, less in person. So apologize for the graininess. Uh, this is one where they used cups and plates, right? This is some sort of, I think, clothespins in here as well. Uh, we've got ideas with maybe a yardstick in there, paper making, um, oops, sorry, using paper to create uh, supports, right? So using tubes and creating a tube is another way to provide that structure in your tower. Uh, this one provides a little more, if you wanted to use like a string, talking about using a tension instead of a, a rigid structure, that could be another thing to teach, a way to show it. Um, and I think you would notice here this cup, how they have some paper in there to make it so the tennis ball doesn't fall all the way down to the bottom. That's, again, what I'm insinuating when I'm saying I won't immediately make them fail by giving them a material that's pretty easy to fail with. So uh, da, da, da. this one, I think, is a really great example of using the materials, um, using all the materials, right? I'm typically going to give them the material in some sort of container. It could be a plastic bag. It could be a paper bag. Um, it could be a lunch sack like this, right? Uh, try and encourage them to use all of those materials. Uh, in this scenario, that added an extra probably 12 inches on their tower. Um, and it's just a really effective use of all of the materials that they're given. Uh, this one is just another cute example of uh, putting the tower on the top, the tennis ball on the top. Uh, that's um, all the example pictures I have based off of that. Uh, are there any additional questions? Is there anywhere that we can go to see the heights of um, past towers that are placed well? That's a really good question. Let me take that one back. I don't I don't have an answer for that. I, I was able to see online that there was previous results from other from last year at least. Uh, on the regular, on the website. Okay. On the McComb SO website, it'll show the heights of last year. I'll see if I can find the link. Yeah. Thank it you. Looks, oh, thank it you. looks like most of those examples have tape. Is that something that's guaranteed to be in their kit? Great question. There will definitely be some sort of I, I would kind of put it this way when you're building your practice kits, okay? Some sort of adhesive, some sort of structural, like rigid piece, um, fork, skewer, et cetera, or something, and then something flexible, uh, twist tie, rubber band, um, pipe cleaner. I try to make sure that there's usually one to two types of each of those in every kit um, that they're given. So, it may not be tape, it may be like labels, like address labels, right? Or it might be sticky notes, it might be um, maybe maybe the way to phrase it is tape-like items. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be tape itself. Um, does, that, does that help? 
Yes, thank you. You mentioned um, that they're going to be constructing on the floor. Yes. Uh, the the floor itself is it just a totally flat floor as as far as like um, like not carpeted like could it ever be on carpet versus like you know a solid floor? <laughs> I've seen it happen on carpet once. I would say it's a lot more typical that we're in some sort of like science lab where it's a, a tile floor, kind of like all these pictures are showing here. Okay, thank you. Yep. Don't see, maybe some of the pa oh, past scores might be where that answer is. Yeah, it looks like they've got the points in here. I'll I'll double check and see if there's a way to share the height of the tower specifically, unless um, we've already found that in the chat. Yeah, I posted you a did? link in the chat. It's the, you were right close to it. It was the K5 something okay. or other and that page. Sure, okay, raw page score. Six. Perfect. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for finding that. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. Uh, if anything else does come up, because I know I'm one of those people that thinks of things as soon as the, the call ends, uh, definitely feel free to use that link um, at the Science Olympia website to submit any other questions that you come up with. Nikita, is there anything else? Oh, I see a hand up. Keith? Any recommendations for how to teach the participants uh, or reference links, et cetera? Like, I, I guess, experiential, like foundational, like concepts, tension, compression, fasteners, et cetera. Any recommendations there? Or Sure. I did put together, and this is um, the first year that I think they're really being posted. I did put together a few basic like definition spreadsheets, et cetera. Let me, I can reshare my screen. Um, they are geared towards like a, a pretty young audience, right? Um, I, I didn't want to go too deep. Uh, so this is one maybe to talk about uh, the definitions of some different words and different things that would be applicable, right? Tension, compression, kind of as you have mentioned. Uh, each of these does have a uh, answer sheet at the end. So if that's not, maybe these are new words for you as well. Um, they're, they're there. So we have one based on definitions. We have one for kind of the, uh, maybe a glossary of words, if you will thinking about uh, strong shapes, right? Why triangles are strong. Um, and then going through this kind of engineering design process, right? Uh, how you can become iterative, very similar to uh, the hypothesis and testing that you would do in science, right? Just adding a little bit more questions for them. Um, and then we made a, a, a worksheet as well to go and they can add and put the titles of what those different pieces are. Is that helpful, Keith? Yes, thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, Nicole, the recording will be available afterwards. It will be on the Science Olympiad website uh, and it'll be right next to last year's recording as well. So. If you want to hear all the same information twice, you can go check that one out too. Awesome. Any other questions? Excellent. Nikita, uh, is there anything else that you need to add? Nope, I'm all set. Thank you, Kelsey. All right. Well, thank you all for joining. Um, I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, definitely put them on the website and I'll get them answered quickly and back to you. Have a good rest of your Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.